everyone, it's me, Nikki, here to show you how to host your own dessert and wine tasting. This is something that I'm venturing out and I'm doing this year. I have not done this in previous years, so I love doing something different. You know, over the years, me and my husband have traveled to several different countries and places and even in the U.S. doing wine tastings, and we really enjoy the experience and I wanted to bring that to my guests for the holiday season you know everybody's gonna be showing up at my house I'm only having a small group this year I'm only doing eight that which includes me and my husband and so it's, by it being such a small intimate group it's going to be great to be able to do a wine and a dessert tasting this is my office you guys remember from my office tour and I've transitioned it for the holidays into my little wine tasting room and so by doing so I took my computer and everything and put it in my bedroom this was actually my desk and I moved it against the wall the chairs actually went to my table and I stored those in my attic normally but I bought them down for uh, this specific holiday and then again this table doubles um, as Christmas Day as an avenue or an area that people can come sit and have dinner if they choose but what I want to do today is I kind of want to take you through and show you how I'm doing the wine tasting and the dessert tasting now I'm being a bit adventurous because I'm doing two separate tastings I'm doing a wine tasting as one and then I'm resetting the table and doing a dessert tasting because I have um guests that love wine and want to partake of wine and then I have guests that don't drink and don't care to drink wine and so they can participate in the dessert tasting so I'm figuring I, I can kind of um, have something for both types of people and then again you know it's all about the experience I love when my friends and my family come to my house I always want to give you an experience something fun to do you know when everybody arrives at my house at Christmas uh, Christmas Eve and they it, it's just I love for you to be relaxed I have the music on I have the candles lit I have um, you know games upstairs everybody just kind of do does you know their own thing and so one of the activities is and I do have activities every year and this is what my activity is going to be this year and I want to take you through and show you how I go about setting up my wine tasting and my dessert tasting and kind of how I do it I am not a wine enthusiast I'm not a professional the only thing I've done is I'm a professional going to uh as far as going to wine tastings and going to vineyards <laughs> I am a professional me and my husband we do enjoy doing that but we're not you know anything professional in that but this is my take on from my experiences at wineries this is my take on how to host your own wine tasting you don't have have a big elaborate table you don't have to have anything elaborate I you can use a card table you can use your coffee table put um a, you know pillows on the floor and make it Moroccan themed. You know, you can be in a small apartment and do this, or you can be in a huge house and do this. This is something that anyone can do. Um, so to tell, show you about a little bit about how I have it set up, as you notice, I have it set up for four. Because I'm only having a total of eight people, it, this allows for um, four people to do the wine tasting and four people to do the dessert tasting. Please ignore my white tablecloth that is all wrinkled up. I'm going to have that all ironed out by Christmas, by Christmas Eve, but I want to put it on here to kind of show you. And also, I'm going to have two white tablecloths prepared because after the wine tasting, when I switch over to the dessert tasting, in case somebody spills wine during the wine tasting, I can put a fresh one on for the dessert tasting, and the dessert tasting people have a clean tablecloth. So to show you my little setup here, um, basically, I have each table, each, um, table setting has six... I mean, five wines. I'm doing a total of actual uh, five. I'm actually doing six wines. I'm sorry. I'm doing a six wine tasting. No, I'm doing a five wine tasting. Excuse me, guys. We're going to be tasting five different wines. And so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two white wines and I'm going to do three red wines. And... The wine on, bottles on the table, these are not the wines I'm actually presenting. It, actually, two of them are. One bottle is um, a bottle that me and my husband got when we vacationed in Greece, and one is from Germany. And so I wanted you to you know, have those as a special treat from the family. The other ones I just sat up to kind of see how the setup was going to be, but I'm going to go to my local um, wine shop and actually get that there this board in the center is where I'm gonna put my different cheeses because actually when we do the wine tasting I'm gonna have the various cheeses to do the pairing on it and then these are the wine stoppers that will be put into the wine bottles I'll open all the wine bottles um, before everybody gets there and have the wine stoppers in there and they're all Christmas themed I actually made them myself I made all of them for 10 bucks guys total total 10 bucks so you got six wine um, bottles for 10 bucks 
And I'm going to show you how I did that. And they're all Christmas inspired. It's very inexpensive to do. It makes for great gifts if you choose. And so um, I wanted some very Christmas inspired um, wine stoppers or bottle stoppers, however you call them. So um, those are addition there. And then again, on my cheese board, I will have some bread, some um, water crackers, and some... Um, different cheeses that pair up with the wines and then again do your research you know if you want to do this research what cheeses go with what wine you don't have to have expensive wine do just do two whites and three reds no matter what the price of the wine is it's just the experience it's them tasting and who knows what they'll find that they like out of it now when you do get the wines and I will take pictures of the cheese board and everything when everything's set up so you can see how things arrange. Um, and I may put a little bit of um, nuts and fruit on there also that tends to go over well when you um, are doing the wine tasting. But once the uh, Christmas Eve, I'll try to get pictures and video and everything once everything's set up because that really makes the table pop when you put the different cheeses on there and all that. So now it looks kind of plain. Um, with the wine, I would say if you're going to do this, get two bottles of the same wine for what you do because one you use for the tasting and then after the tasting if they care to have a full glass then they can have it you also want to have water um, so you want to have a pitcher of water on the table and a water glass next to them so that in between each wine sampling they can um, clean their palate with the water now you do not pour but about a shot glass full of wine during the tasting um, at a time and the white plates here I got from Pier 1, and it's just a nice dessert plate. Um, and then here I got these from Amazon.com. Oh, I can't remember when. But I wanted everyone to have their own so that when they um, get their cheese, they can just, they don't have to wait on one to, to use it and da 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 da. And then I have my little tent cards in front of the wine glasses because a wine I have a wine glass for each wine that they're going to taste. Um, that's the water glass. And then I have... Um, the little the little tents um, that I made for to I'm going to label what each wine is on there so they know what glass matches with what because you don't want to mix the wines now if you don't have enough glasses to do one for each wine you can use one wine glass but just have um, a cup of water or something besides so that they can clean their glasses out at each time and maybe pour it in a little bucket a cute little bucket on the side or something like that it's always a way to jazz it up and then I do have this notepad which I'm going to show you how to make this custom notepad to match your little tents um, and this is all just um, scrapbook card stock and it's really easy to do and a little pencil so that they can write down um, the different flavors of the wine, the wines that they liked or the wines they didn't like, or, you know, when you go to wine tastings, you will always get a notepad and things to be able to write, write these things down. And so I wanted to kind of mimic the same thing as if they were at a real wine tasting where they could document uh, their findings from the wine or what they felt about the wine. And I also like looking at this because then I'll know what wines they like. So the next time they come to my house, I know what to serve. But um, it's just kind of a good thing that. Now my wine glasses are totally inexpensive wine glasses. They I got these in England from a local grocery store Tesco four for 88 pence which is about four for a dollar and very inexpensive they're not the fancy and they're probably not the wine glasses that you're supposed to be using to be you know correct with the wine tasting but they serve the purpose and you know I'm doing this my way and so I have I when I was in England I got a ton of these because four they were 25 cents a piece and they're good strong durable quality glasses and it's great for when I have a large crowd I can give um, have plenty of wine glasses and then also check out my blog to see where I store my wine glasses I'll post that on there this week so you can see simple two by two cut these two by two squares and folded them to make my little tents I'm going to print out beautifully put what the name of um, each wine is so that they know what glass coordinates with the wine so they don't mix it um, and then actually you know during the wine tasting I, I pour the first glass only about a shot glass full and and tell them a little bit about the wine they can write it down they can put their thoughts um i'll show them the proper way that i learned to um, taste and smell and look and, and experience the wine as they taste it and we'll actually go through the process um by the time you know they finish they can write down whatever uh, you know they want to write down and they can keep these notepads so that when they go home they can if they want to find the wine or uh just as a keepsake or whatever the case may be you know it's it's no biggie and i'm going to show you how to make these notepads this cost me about 25 cents to make and it coordinates with my tents like i said very simple to do and you know this is inexpensive this is such an inexpensive setup to do but it's a lot of fun at least i'm hoping they have a lot of fun with it you know i always do but again ignore the wrinkles in my tablecloth they will not be there uh christmas eve so um again 
Um, this is the, the setup that I have. It's going to be totally, when I put the cheeses and everything, it's really going to pop the table out and make it um, look a lot better. And then also when I have my bottle stoppers in the bottles, it's going to be radiant and it's going to light up the table. Also, I put some Christmas lights um, under some fabric to sit the wine on just to kind of give that holiday festive feel there uh, for that table. So this is the setup and, and I hope they enjoy it, you know, and I'm actually going to stand around and, and explain the wine, pour the wine. I'm going to have over on my bar here, I'm going to have um, another set of the wine there so that after they finish the tasting, if they want a full glass of it, they can have it. But during the tasting, I'm only going to fill it about this far just to, because the purpose of the tasting is just to taste it, not to have a full glass. And if someone says, oh, they're in the middle of tasting, give me a full glass of that. Say, okay, at the end we'll do it. But during the tasting, they just need to only have that kind of shot of um, wine so that they can really enjoy the experience. So, and again, you know, just research um, different wine tastings. Go on YouTube, watch wine tastings and learn and, and go to a wine tasting and, and you can kind of experience it yourself. But it's a beautiful experience. It's really fun. And I'm uh, hoping that, you know, my guests really have a good time with it. And the ones that love uh, enjoying and partaking of wine, they can really truly enjoy it. And then I have the, my desk chair in here too. So if anybody who really is not a wine drinker, but they want to observe, they can sit in a chair and observe. You know, again, um, it's really laid back um, when you come for Christmas Eve. It's, you know, I still have my dining room. We'll have um, that Christmas Eve. I have plenty of desserts out there. So, you know, everybody will be partaking the desserts out there, especially my brother. He'll probably be manning that table. He is like the dessert table king. And so, um, it's just going to be really um, a fun activity. So I'm hoping that they will enjoy it. If you want to do this, I encourage you to do it. It doesn't matter if you're in a efficiency apartment or you in a big house or whatever you're in, um, you can do this. You can get that card table out, put a um, fabric over it or tablecloth or whatever the case may be and set this up, you know, whatever wines you want to use it's about the experience it's about making something fun and i pride myself on when my friends and my family come to my home i want you to leave with a fun experience so i love doing these little things and and setting up something different and every year i do a different activity or something different just to kind of put a little twist on the evening and to just have something fun to do and this is just great for that so now i want to show you how i actually do my um, bottle stoppers i get these inexpensive bottle stoppers offline anywhere look for wedding favor websites they pop about a dollar 20 each you can even get them for 99 cents you can get them from your um ac moore and michaels and things they may be a little more expensive but use maybe two dollars or so but i just get them for a dollar and i'll put some links below where you can go to get those um you can go to pier one to get some beautiful ornaments or the dollar store had you can get several like three for uh, for a dollar and that's what i did with these some this one's one's from pier one and one's from the dollar store or from Big lots of the dollar store one. And I just basically take it, screw it off. And this is 99 cents. I think I paid $1.20 or something for that. I screwed it off. Um, I'm using hot glue gun today just to show you for um, quick dry purposes. But you want to use E6000 glue so that it will stay. Um, hot glue will stay temporarily or however, you know. But to have it so that you can pull it and it won't um, just to have more sturdy, I would use E6000 glue. But because E6000 takes a little longer to dry, I'm using hot glue just to show you the purpose. And you just stick it in there and voila, you have a large, beautiful, elaborate bottle stopper for your holiday table. Again, I'm just putting my glue at the bottom and I'm just sticking it on the top. These make great gifts. Put them in a little, on um, one of those little, um, what's a little sack? It's a little mesh sack, it's whatever. And give them as gifts. It's really cute and easy to do. If you get something with glitter on it, make sure it's not anything where the glitter comes off. Like this is not, um, it, look, it, it sparkles, but it's not a rub off glitter because you don't want it to get in the wine. Um, but so just be care mindful of sparkle things. This is like a Christmas bulb that I did and I put it on that wine stopper. And so I just wanted to make a variety of different ones. I mean, guys, it took me all of five minutes to do these. They are so quick. Um, and so easy and I love the drama of them. You can just buy a little cheap wine stopper and I could have left it as is But no, I wanted to glam it up and make it big and beautiful And so that's why putting ornaments onto these wine stoppers are um, a great way to make fun wine stoppers and um, So easy. I did all of these for a total a total guys of under ten dollars or right at ten dollars so to make um, five or six 
you know, I made six of them for $10. So um, and you think about coworkers. For $10, you knock out all your coworkers. Put them in a cute little bag, put a bow on it, and call it a day. And so um, the night of the tasting, before everybody gets there, I'll open up all my bottles. I'll put each wine stopper in each bottle, and it really will give a cute look. Here, I went ahead and put one in a bottle just kind of so you would see what it looks like. And I just really think it's a nice um, touch, and it's such an easy thing to do. And you can do more elaborate ornaments, um, like from Pier 1 um, or from, you know, wherever you want to do Linux, wherever, I mean, just wherever you want to get your ornaments or the dollar store like I said they have things like this that are just as adorable and cute so it's up to you however you want to do them but it's just such an inexpensive and easy easy thing to do um, and you can do these for every holiday it's not just Christmas I love a neutral color but if you want red bulbs use red bulbs use green bulbs use whatever you're themed out for the holidays I just you know I'm you guys know I keep everything neutral and that's why I have um, just the um, white and clear and, and blingy things like that and then you can also do these for Thanksgiving you can get just different items that you know for Thanksgiving so this is there's no limit to how you can you know do a wine stopper so again I'll put some links below on how um, where you can get some um, wine stoppers for 99 cent over a dollar and then the, as far as my wine notepad I simply from the scraps from making my tent cards, literally, I have this post-it notepad. And you know, you, you guys know these things. And this is actually the cheapy one. This is not really the post-it note. And this is, I got it for a dollar at one of my discount stores or somewhere. And I need four pads, four notepads. So I'm going to just split it in four. And you guys know how that roll. And then you need just some two-sided tape or a hot glue gun. And then you just cut your um, scrapbook cardstock into the width of your pad and then two inches um in height and you just fold it over so that it's like the decorative top, top part of you know how it's like a notepad and it's like the decorative top part which coordinates with your little tents and you just use your two-sided tape to um adhere it down or um you can use hot glue whichever your preference is and for time's sake i'll just use hot glue to just kind of show you um how i go about doing it but you're just going to hot glue the front of it um to stick it on and then on the back so you can stick it down and again they can take these with them and then too like I said you know people um Christmas Eve is just really relaxed Christmas music is on some people like to be upstairs in the little den watching tv some people like to be in the other room watching playing cards and so I'm actually going to do some of these for um the the if someone if they want to play card they do play cards here you know so I'll just make for them to write down their scores and things I'm going to make some fun festive Christmas ones for for that just as an added touch also but there you go, and that's just an easy way to make um, a little notepad. And I learned this when I was in New Jersey. I went to some class, some kind of crafting class, and the lady taught us this, and it was really fun. And so this is a great craft craft also, these little notepads to do with your kids also. And so this is the little setup. So I have my coordinating tents that are going to have the names of each um, wine and my little notepad. So now to move into my dessert table okay the wine tasting is over all the winos they're gone and they're playing cards watching tv or maybe knocked out or walking around the dessert table in the dining room or whatever the case may be just relaxing and then um, me and my husband will clear this out and we'll set this table as it is now and this will be the dessert tasting and the dessert tasting i left the wine bottles on the table because you know they're not hurting anything but i put my crystal candelabra in the center and i'll light the candles um the night of Christmas Eve when I put the table together. Um, I do have my spare tablecloth in case everything, anybody spills any wine at the first tasting, I can put a fresh one on. It takes me all of about mm, 10 minutes maybe to set this up. It's really quick setup. Again, the wine glasses from the previous tasting will go into the dishwasher and then these will come out. Um, the table looks plain now because the desserts not, are not here. But when I do the sample desserts, it really is just going to make that table pop because you're going to have all these beautiful desserts. I'm going to do six different desserts mini desserts so the tasting will consist of six different desserts i'm still working out totally which desserts i'm going to do and so um this is a in process thing so that's why i wanted to go ahead and show you in case this is something you want to do you can kind of see how i'm doing mine and you can get started on it if you care to do this um so basically to take you around i have my six different dessert setups here um i put um 
the same dishes I'm using. I have another set of the same dessert dishes that I'm using for them to actually put their desserts on or to use as their little plate. And then I have the little card that's going to have a description of the desserts in there. Um, the plates I got from Pier 1, like I told you. The spoons I actually made, they're inexpensive spoons, and I kind of bling them out with some um, gold-ass um, beading. And I'll do a tutorial in another video of how I did that, because I, I got to still, I need to still make two more. I made um, these two, but I still need to make two more. And it's just a beautiful way to make a um, utensil, um, just to add that bling festive holiday touch there. And so I sit that in the little cubby there. I have these... Um, napkins that I got from Pier 1, these silk napkins. I've had these for about a year or so now. And so they're just a really added green touch to them with the crystal napkin rings. And then um, also um, I put a water glass on the table because they want to um, have water to have in between their um, sampling. And so I want to put, um, and then also this little card is going to have all the desserts printed out with a beautiful description of each dessert. They're not printed out now because I'm still trying to finalize which desserts I'm doing and all that kind of stuff. So, um, and I need to do my trial and error. So they will be on there and I'm going to get footage the night of, so you guys can see the table come to life and kind of how it looks with the desserts and everything. So I will definitely get pictures and try to get video also, um, of everything um, but with my tasting sets I've had this my tasting sets I built it over a couple you know years or whatever I've gotten them various places and some I've gotten as gifts but Pier One is an excellent excellent place to get these things or even in your local grocery store sometime you find this stuff in you know Target you can find this stuff I mean it just just whenever you see it grab it again the wine glasses are bigger for this group here and I hope because I'm and it's not for wine it's for water so I'm going to put another um, water bottle on the other side of the table also so that, you know, they don't have to reach over and things like that. And um, I want to take you through and kind of just show you my little bit of tasting dishes here. Um, so basically, because it's four people that are going to be doing the tasting, um, I'm doing four of each mini dessert. Now these little um, dishes here, my friend Marie from England sent me and I absolutely love them. I love the shape of them. And so this will be for one of the dessert samples. And um, when I'm doing my sample, I'm gonna take them through each one. They're gonna grab one, eat it, experience it. Um, this here I got from, I can't remember, Pier One, I think I got these from. The plate was from somewhere else. The other one in the back I got in England can't remember where. I believe my mother gave me this as a gift, a hostess gift when she came to my house for something. I can't remember, but I know she gave me that. Um, this here I got from Sansbury, which is a grocery store in England. They're actually the little egg cups. And I got those in the grocery store in England and they make perfect for desserts. The spoons I had got from Pier One, but this is going to be perfect for one of my desserts. And I just sit it on the simple white plate that I had just to kind of give it um, the unique tasting look. It's just another added touch there. And so you can mix, that's the great thing about white tasting dishes is that you can mix and match. Um, and then these here I got, from Pier One, and they're just the cute little um, tasting dishes also. And I'm gonna put something like a puff pastry or something in that one there. And um, again, ignore the wrinkles in the tablecloth. They're not gonna be there Christmas Eve. Um, and so this is just a white plate I had and I set it on there. And I encourage you, if you do a dessert tasting, use all white dishes because it makes your dessert pop. Um, the table looks very plain now, but you wait till I put my desserts in there. It's really going to come to life. And so um, I, that's what I love about white dishes. And I love the fact that you can mix and match them. So I do encourage you to, to do that. Um, when I did my napkins, I fluffed them up because I wanted to have a fun flare look because it is a dessert tasting. So I want it to be kind of decadent and just yummy. And so I um, went with just kind of fluffing uh, out my napkins instead of having kind of more reserved look with them. And so this is kind of how my dessert tasting um, is set up. And what I'm going to do is just walk everybody through each one. I'm going to explain kind of the dessert. I'm going to play a little game to say um, they can list on the back of their cards. Um, I'll pick a dessert and I'll say, can you list every ingredient that's in this dessert? And the one that gets closest to listing them all or does list them all can win a prize. So it's just kind of making it fun by adding those little games and touches in it and um, kind of enjoying it. And who wants to sit down at a table and just try, you know, six different desserts? It's just going to be absolutely delicious. So this is going to be a fun activity. 
everybody's going to really enjoy it. And so I'm excited about um, how this is going to turn out. Um, if you do something like this, always, I encourage you, always try the desserts and make the desserts before your event so that you know that you can perfect them and that you know that they're right when you're ready to serve them. So everything that I'm going to serve, I am going to make ahead of time and make sure that I um, sample it. I'm also going to let my husband taste test it because he's my sampler king and just to make sure it's exactly what I want and exactly what I think my uh, guests will like. And so uh, you don't want to wait to the day of to kind of try something because if it flops, then you're kind of stuck and you don't want to have be presenting something that you're not happy with or you know that kind of thing so I just encourage you if you want to do that and again um just all of these tasting dishes are terribly inexpensive it's not you guys it's just really inexpensive so you know over time just when you're in the store and Ross is, is Ross is a great place to find these little things also and so um you know you really you don't have to spend a lot of money for these things and then two you know once people know what you love, if they know that, okay, people know that I'm, I love entertaining and things like that. So whenever I, my birthday comes around, I'm always getting little things like this and it really just makes my day and it always comes in handy. So, um, you know, if you're that, you know, if that's something you want to get into, then, you know, that's build your collection of them. Um, I still have other ones that I want to get because if I ever want to do the skin, I want to try um, different dishes and things like that. So I'm really excited about the dessert tasting because this will be the first time I actually did a full uh, dessert tasting. Sometimes I have made some before with guests and just had one with desserts in them, but this is one where I'm doing multiple desserts. So it's really going to be fun to um, execute that. And I can't wait to tell you guys um, how it actually turns out. But I'm hoping that it will be totally, totally, totally fun. And I hope that my guests will enjoy. And also with the wine being on the table, if they want, they can partake of it, the dessert people. But they don't have to because, and, you know, I know I'm specifically doing the dessert tasting for those. And so um, this is just how I set up for my dessert tasting. But you don't have to do it this way. I'm just sharing what I love to do. I'm not a professional, guys. This is just what... I um, came up with and what I truly enjoy doing. So if you have tips, let me know. If you have some ideas of how I can tweak it, please let me know. I love sharing and getting ideas from everyone. So please uh, give me your input on it. Um, so I hope you enjoyed and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful holiday.